Florida law enforcement responded to a call from the luxury Ben Hotel in West Palm Beach, where a woman was causing a disturbance. In October of 2023, footage of what followed was released to the public in April of 2024 and went viral on multiple social media platforms. Hotel staff reported that Julia Regine Moorhead, aged 36, had fallen over in the lobby and then reportedly started going crazy towards workers who'd asked her if she was staying at the hotel. Upon being approached by the police outside, Moorhead, who appeared to be under the influence, questioned their presence at the scene before storming back into the lobby. She began screaming as a hotel manager escorted her out of the hotel, explaining to her that she was no longer welcome on the premises. Once outside, officers told her she would be considered a trespasser if she disobeyed. Moorhead remained belligerent and continued screaming insults at the police before the manager stepped in, asking if she could be moved from the property. In the moments that followed, Moorhead, who was clutching a Louis Vuitton bag, childishly lay flat on the sidewalk to prevent the cops from moving her. Once persuaded to rise back to her feet, she continued flailing about, striking a woman in the face in the process. Cops then took Moorhead down, piling on top of her, pushing on her face and neck as they struggled to restrain her. The woman remained combative and began yelling hysterically. After Moorhead was handcuffed and lifted off the ground, she persisted in the tantrum by screaming, dragging her feet and flailing about. She at one point threw herself on the ground once more, thrashing around so violently that her skirt rode up, exposing her lower half. With difficulties on the officer's part, Moorhead was eventually bundled into the police vehicle. Her boyfriend emerged at that point and pleaded with the cops to be gentle with her, triggering a frustrated reply from an officer who said, Be gentle! She's kicking and punching us. We were very nice to her the whole time. There is no being gentle anymore. It's done. She was charged with battery of an emergency responder, resisting arrest, trespass, criminal damage, and disorderly intoxication. Number 6. Rudy Wilcox In November of 2023, a Florida man was arrested for a bizarre incident involving indecent exposure and a dead possum. On the afternoon of November the 15th, Rudy Wilcox dropped his pants in the middle of the Belcher Road and Willow Tree Trail intersection during rush hour traffic. In the moments that followed, 45-year-old Wilcox went number two on a dead possum in the road. He was witnessed doing so by multiple motorists and an officer of the Clearwater Police Department. Upon questioning, Wilcox denied any wrongdoing, claiming that the officer who'd spotted him couldn't see straight. However, according to a police report, physical evidence viewed at the scene corroborated the allegations. Wilcox, who wasn't under the influence of any intoxicants at the time, was booked at the Pinellas County Jail on a charge of indecent exposure. Number 5. Thomas Elliott 21-year-old Thomas Elliott, a volunteer at a Greenville Elementary School in North Carolina, was arrested for peeping in April of 2024. An unnamed customer at a Target in Greenville had been recording Elliott on her cell phone after she'd noticed him following her around the store. The woman ended up capturing a disturbing incident. As another woman was crouching by a children's bookshelf, Elliot bent down behind her and slid his phone underneath her dress in an attempt to photograph or record her privates. The woman who'd been filming him loudly confronted Elliot, shouting, Seriously? What are you doing? I just saw you put that underneath her dress. Realizing he'd been caught in the act, Elliot immediately began denying he'd done anything wrong, claiming that he'd been shopping for children's books because his sister was pregnant. Both women demanded to see his phone, with the one who was recording him adding, I knew you were up to no good. The man spoke softly to say, I'm not like that, but the video evidence was incontestable. The clip generated a great deal of attention online and was also picked up by multiple media outlets. The Inside Edition YouTube clip alone rose to over a million views within days. 
Elliot was arrested at the scene and charged with felony secret peeping. After the Greenville Police Department reviewed the store security footage, it emerged that Elliot was a serial peeping Tom. Several more victims were identified at the store, and as of April the 20th, the man faced five counts of secret peeping. More victims were expected to emerge, as Elliot was also believed to have used his cell phone to take photos under an employee's clothes at the Open Door Church in Winterville, where he was an employee. The Eastern Elementary School, where Elliot had been volunteering, severed all ties with him in the aftermath. As of the latest information available on the matter, the 21-year-old wasn't suspected to have engaged in peeping while working at the school. Number 4. James Denham Watson 31-year-old James Denham Watson went out drinking with his two roommates in Clarendon, Arlington County, Virginia, on a Friday night in March of 2013. Upon returning to their shared Lyon Village home, Watson passed out on the couch still wearing his shoes. When he woke up, he reported he felt a tingling on his face. He looked at his phone and found that one of his roommates had drawn a male organ on his face. Even though the men were in their 30s, such childish antics were reportedly commonplace in the home. In a fit of rage, Watson stormed into the other man's room, ambushed him in his sleep and started relentlessly punching him in the face. The assault resulted in the victim suffering a broken nose and an eye that was swollen shut, among other facial injuries. He was treated at the Virginia Hospital Center, and about half an hour after the beating, he called the police to press charges. Watson was arrested for assault. He made national and international news after his mugshot showed him with the drawing still faintly visible on the side of his face. During the trial that followed, the victim reported it was a house rule that whoever fell asleep wearing their shoes would be drawn on, but Watson claimed he wasn't aware of such a rule. In the spring of 2014, he was found guilty of assault, but the jury recommended no jail time. They were believed to have come to the decision out of sympathy towards Watson due to the negative attention he'd received as a result of the mugshot. Assistant Commonwealth's attorney Ben Inman stated that aside from the media coverage, Watson had been subjected to widespread ridicule during the weekend in which he'd been in jail before making bail. He was ultimately sentenced to pay a $1,250 fine and restitution to the victim. Number 3. Kaylee Neffen Boshilka Walt In August of 2018, an underage drinking arrest in Valparaiso, Indiana, devolved into felony charges after two young women carried out childish antics towards Porter County law enforcement. 18-year-old Boshilka Walt and Kaylee Neff, aged 20, were discovered by the police in the area of Union Street and Garfield Avenue. Friends were reportedly trying to prevent the intoxicated young women from driving. When they were questioned by the officers, the duo, who weren't yet of the legal age to drink alcohol, claimed they'd been to a frat party. The police made the decision to take them into custody on misdemeanor charges of minor consumption of alcohol. Neff started screaming and crying as both she and Walt resisted officers and had to be forced into a police car. While en route to the local jail, Walt slipped out of her seat belt in the back seat. When an officer stopped the vehicle to secure her, Neff escaped from the vehicle's front seat. She was recaptured shortly thereafter, and upon learning at the jail that she'd face a felony count of fleeing, the young woman reportedly threw herself on the ground and commenced to engage in a temper tantrum. Also at the jail, according to a police report, Walt demanded she be promptly released, claiming that her family was exceptionally wealthy. The outcome of their cases remained unclear. Today's topic was requested by Foul Mouth Crafts. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Nathan Harrison 20-year-old Utah skier Nathan Harrison was arrested on January the 19th of 2019 after throwing a violent temper tantrum at the Brighton Ski Resort. By 10 a.m., the resort was crowded and the parking lot was full. Harrison approached the lot and began relentlessly honking his horn. Officer Mark Curley of the Unified Police Department was working an assignment at the resort. He tried explaining to an irate Harrison 
that he would have to turn around but the young man demanded to be allowed in the parking lot, claiming he had a season pass to ski. He continued driving towards signs and cones that were blocking the road until a parking attendant slapped his vehicle to get him to stop. In the moments that followed, Curly opened Harrison's car door and commanded him to step out. Harrison, however, grabbed the officer and pulled him inside the vehicle. Curly was able to yank the young man from the car and an altercation ensued. Harrison repeatedly swung his closed fists at the officer. As they grappled on the ground, the enraged skier pushed Curly's face into the snow, making it hard for him to breathe. Witnesses would report seeing Harrison attempting to grab the cop's gun. Curly was ultimately able to kick him off and held him at gunpoint until backup arrived to assist with the arrest. Harrison was booked at the Salt Lake County Jail on a slew of charges that included aggravated assault, disarming a police officer, disorderly conduct, and interfering with an officer. If these childish antics weren't crazy enough for you, wait till you find out what happens when acting like a fool goes wrong, because it's coming right up after number one. Number one, George O'Boyle's raiding party. On July the 22nd of 2021, Englishman George O'Boyle and several of his friends, all of whom were in costumes, arrived in a stretched limousine to a Clapham Junction as the supermarket in the London borough of Wandsworth. 30-year-old O'Boyle, who called himself G-Money on social media, was identified as the ringleader behind the chaos that followed. He led the costumed individuals, some of whom belonged to the same martial arts club as they wrought havoc inside the store. Three of the six suspects came from Northampton, while the others were from Southwest and West London. O'Boyle was clad in a yellow tracksuit to emulate comedy star Ali G, while his girlfriend and mother of his two children, Katie Picard, joined in the so-called prank, dressed as a nun. Also taking part in the social media announced event was 33-year-old Northampton martial arts champion Josh McDonald, who was dressed as Spider-Man, and his teenage stepdaughter, Sophie Roberts, the latter who was part of the same martial arts club as her stepdad had donned a little red riding hood outfit. The childish stunt devolved into mayhem and a mass brawl after the raiding group was confronted by staff and shoppers. One particularly disturbing moment during the skirmish was sparked by a fight between 19-year-old Roberts and Asda worker Lauren Scott. The teen, an unemployed mother of two, punched Scott in the face, triggering a grappling match. Seconds later, Spider-Man clad McDonald intervened. He was recorded kicking Scott in the chest as she backed away before he punched her in the face, knocking her out cold. The woman was left with a fractured eye socket and the clip of the attack went viral, being picked up by media outlets around the world. O'Boyle was also seen taking part in the skirmish as he struck the store's manager in the face over a dozen times. The fighting intensified after the mob got hold of metal bars from the storeroom. One member of the raiding group, one-legged amateur boxer Ricky McKenzie, was knocked out of his wheelchair, which he then reportedly used as a weapon against staff. The incident ended in the gang's arrest. In the aftermath, McKenzie and Roberts pleaded guilty for their role in the raid and received suspended sentences. McDonald pleaded guilty to violent disorder and occasioning actual bodily harm as well as to wounding with intent in an unrelated incident. The latter involved him smashing a glass over a man's head in broad daylight in Northampton city centre, then picking up a glass shard and slicing the victim. McDonald was jailed for six years and six months, with an additional monitoring period of three years and six months after being labelled a danger to the public. With problematic attitudes to masculinity, O'Boyle, who was identified as the leader of the mayhem, pleaded guilty to violent disorder and was jailed for two years and two months. The gang's actions were heavily condemned online and collectively labelled a pathetic attempt at internet fame. In line with some of O'Boyle's other social media antics, the man who had nearly 90,000 followers on TikTok had at one point boasted that supermarkets were his playground. He posted videos of his distasteful stunts even as he awaited his day in court for the Asda raid. They included him cooking burgers on a camping stove in the middle of another Asda climbing on a till and loudly screeching on a guitar and concealing a case of beer under his skirt while dressed as a nun. 
a viral video which had millions of views on Twitter, captured a Canadian woman apparently attacking another female in September of 2022 for not wearing a bra. In the video, the enraged 37-year-old could be seen pacing towards and furiously shouting at Laura Gagnon in a public park in Ottawa. Gagnon, who was recording the incident, could be heard asking the alleged attacker why she was targeting an indigenous woman and body shaming her for not wearing a bra. The suspect was then seen further approaching Gagnon when suddenly her camera phone appeared to be knocked to the ground and screams could be heard while Gagnon was seemingly attacked. Moments later, Gagnon had gotten inside her car but was unable to leave because the woman was now sitting on the hood of her car. Officers responding to the scene confirmed that Gagnon had been assaulted and arrested the unnamed suspect on charges of assault and mischief. Number 11. Carlicia Hood 35-year-old Carlicia Hood ordered her teen son to shoot a man dead in a fast food eatery in Chicago, Illinois. The harrowing incident unfolded on June the 18th of 2023, when Hood got into an argument with 32-year-old Jeremy Brown while waiting for food at the Maxwell Street Express hot dog joint on Halstead Street. The argument escalated from screaming to Brown threatening to knock her out and punching her several times in the face. The mother then texted her son, who was waiting in the car for help. Moments later, the young teen came in with his mother's firearm and shot Brown in the back. Brown tried to flee the scene but was followed by the teen and shot once more. The man later died from his injuries. Hood and her son had fled after the shooting, but later turned themselves into police custody after authorities released surveillance footage, clearly showing the teen entering the restaurant and pulling the trigger. The pair were charged with first-degree murder. Hood was held on a $3 million bond and her son was held without bail in a juvenile detention center. A week later, new evidence came to light, which was cell phone video footage showing the brutal pummeling Hood had undergone at the hands of Brown. Consequently, the prosecutors dropped the charges against Hood and her son. The Cook County State's Attorney's Office stated that based upon the facts, evidence and law, they were unable to meet their burden of proof in the prosecution of the cases. As of the latest updates, Hood filed a four-count complaint against the city after being released. She was alleging malicious prosecution, false arrest and intentional infliction of emotional distress. Number 10. Charles Eugene Ferris Police in Rogers, Arkansas arrested two neighbors after they reportedly took turns shooting at each other with a 22 caliber rifle while wearing a bulletproof vest on March the 31st of 2019. The Benton County Sheriff's Office dispatched a deputy to Mercy Hospital after receiving a report of a man who'd been shot six times. Apparently, the bullets didn't penetrate because of the vest he'd worn during the shooting. The deputy interviewed 50-year-old Charles Eugene Ferris, who initially claimed he was shot while protecting an asset. However, Ferris's wife arrived at the hospital and told investigators that her husband and neighbor, 36-year-old Christopher Hicks, had shot at each other while drinking on the back porch of their home. Ferris shot Hicks five times in the back, causing bruises but no serious injuries, after which Ferris was also shot. According to a police affidavit, Ferris later recanted his initial story, saying he made it up to keep Hicks from getting in trouble. The two men were then charged with aggravated assault. In January of 2020, Ferris was sentenced to 27 days in jail and five years of probation after he pleaded guilty to aggravated assault and possession of a firearm. After investigating further, deputies learned that when Ferris told Hicks to shoot him, the latter actually refused and never pulled the trigger. Ferris, along with his wife, eventually admitted that he himself had fired a bullet into his own vest after Hicks had refused to shoot him. In August of 2020, the charge against Hicks was dropped. After the dismissal, Hicks went to the media explaining that it had taken months for the prosecutor to drop his case, even after the full facts had become clear and that his name was dragged through the mud and he was now considered King Redneck. If that wasn't enough, he also had his arm broken by a deputy while in jail after he was thrown to the ground by him. 
Hicks needed two surgeries on his arm and now has a steel plate, along with four screws, metal brackets, and wire to hold his elbow together. He said he's in constant pain and is disabled from the injury for the rest of his life. Number 9. Joseph Fernandez in the early hours of July the 8th of 2023, a drive-by shooting took place at a residence on the 5500 block of Little Creek Drive in San Antonio, Texas. The homeowner, 36-year-old Joseph Fernandez, was struck in the lower leg after recovering from the initial shock and briefly tending to his shot wound, Fernandez and his brother reportedly drove to a home on Middlefield Drive to confront the person they suspected of shooting him. Upon arrival, Fernandez only found 43-year-old Gilbert Lopez, who was a relative of the man they suspected to have been the shooter. They got into a heated confrontation at which point Fernandez pulled a handgun and shot Lopez in the chest. Fernandez subsequently got back into the vehicle and they drove off. Police were called to the scene where responding officers arrived to find Lopez dead. Shortly after, investigators were able to identify Fernandez as the shooter. They located him at his home and took him to the hospital before booking him into jail. As of the latest updates, Fernandez had remained in jail on a $100,000 bond. Number 8. Isela Escobar Texas woman Isela Escobar was charged with robbery after she stole an ambulance from the Mission Regional Medical Center on July the 15th of 2022. The 31-year-old had been waiting to be discharged from the hospital that morning. Escobar, who had already been displaying erratic behavior, was sitting on a bench with a security guard when she suddenly started walking toward an idling ambulance, which had no occupants. According to the probable cause affidavit, the guard told her to stay away from the vehicle, but she suddenly went inside the ambulance through the driver's side. The guard tried to remove the key from the ignition. A brief struggle ensued, and it ended with Escobar allegedly pushing and kicking the guard to the ground before driving off. Medics contacted law enforcement and provided them with the live feed of the internal camera system installed on the ambulance. Officers eventually arrested Escobar at 4126 Farm to Market Road, 492. She was then booked into the Fidalgo County Adult Detention Center. She later pleaded guilty to assault causing bodily injury and was sentenced to 123 days behind bars. As part of the plea bargain agreement, the 123 days she'd already served were credited. Number 7. Gregory Barr II 19-year-old Andre Hachinas was shot to death in West Melbourne, Florida while trying to de-escalate an argument between two people. The ordeal unfolded late on the night of June the 25th of 2021 in an area near Columbia Lane and US Route 192, where teens and young adults had been partying around the campfire. WKMG reported that 26-year-old Gregory Barr II started arguing with someone who'd spilled beer on him. Barr then put a knife against that person's throat. When Hachinas interviewed, Barr attempted to slash Hachinas with the knife. He was able to avoid being cut and countered by punching back. Barr then suddenly pulled out a gun and shot Hachinas in the neck, causing life-threatening injuries. The victim was taken to Holmes Regional Medical Center where he was later pronounced dead. Responding law enforcement officers arrested Barr on a charge of second-degree murder. According to a police report, he waived his Miranda rights and admitted to shooting the victim. The latest updates indicated that he was awaiting sentencing after a jury found him guilty of manslaughter with a firearm and aggravated assault with a knife. Number 6. Paula Michelle Locklear a Virginia man shot a naked woman who'd broken into his Austinsville home on February the 26th of 2023 after she attacked him with a frying pan. The homeowner had allegedly heard a noise coming from the back of his home. Consequently, he went to the kitchen and saw the woman coming into the rear door. The intruder, later identified as Paula Michelle Locklear, immediately began hitting the homeowner in the head with a cast iron frying pan. The man found his bearings and kicked Locklear out of his home and locked the door. 
According to the Carroll County Sheriff's Office, Locklear then went on the back porch and turned all the home's electrical breakers off. She yelled at the victim, telling him to get out of her house or she was going to kill him and then began beating on the door, at which point the homeowner discharged a firearm and shot her in the leg. Responding deputies arrived to find her with a gunshot wound to the leg. After receiving medical treatment, Locklear was booked into the county jail on charges of felony breaking and entering while armed, assault and battery, and property damage. Subsequent information indicated that the homeowner wasn't charged after an investigation determined that he'd acted in self-defense. No further updates explained what had prompted Locklear's bizarre behavior. Number 5. Brian Keith Harrington On February the 2nd of 2019, 23-year-old Florida man Brian Keith Harrington became enraged and started attacking his sister and several others because someone had touched one of his cigars. Apparently, Harrington believed that his sister's boyfriend had either moved or smoked one of his cigars. He reportedly attacked the boyfriend and started shoving his sister and other relatives when they tried to calm him down. He then went to the refrigerator, got several items and threw them at his pregnant sister. His outburst continued for several more moments before his relatives were able to restrain him. According to an arrest affidavit, a responding police officer arrived at the scene and placed Harrington under arrest. Somehow, he was able to bite the officer on the left thumb, after which he threatened to kill him. In the aftermath, none of the family members pressed charges against Harrington. However, records indicated that he was sentenced to two and a half years of incarceration after he was found guilty of resisting an officer with violence in connection with the incident. Number 4. Sean Malarkey a YouTube video of an Illinois woman attempting to bite a police officer during her arrest went viral with 7.5 million views as of late October of 2023, shortly after 8 p.m. on June the 9th of 2022. Police were dispatched to the 100 block of West Walnut Street in Hinsdale to serve a warrant for the arrest of 45-year-old Sean Malarkey on charges of domestic battery. Malarkey had been accused of hitting her ex-husband with her car. In the footage, Malarkey was seen arriving at her house and driving to the garage. When the officer approached her, she refused to get out of her car. Apparently, the situation escalated as she became aggressive and uncooperative with the officer. More officers arrived at the scene and Malarkey continued being belligerent threatening them and swearing at them repeatedly. She was eventually taken out of her car and placed into the back of a police car where one of the officers told her she smelled of alcohol. Malarkey responded, that's my piss because I'm pissing on you. Moments later, she managed to get out of the police car that they just put her in. While officers were putting her back inside the vehicle, she tried to bite one of them. In the end, she was booked into the DuPage County Jail facing not only the initial charge of domestic battery, but also aggravated assault on an officer, resisting an officer, aggravated DUI, and possessing alcohol while driving. Number 3. Dajon Miller 22-year-old Arizona man Dajon Miller was arrested on suspicion of killing his uncle over a disagreement over who could sleep on the couch. Phoenix police were called to a home near 8th Street and Baseline Road at approximately 10.30 p.m. on July the 17th of 2022. They responded to a resident who had reported having heard shots. Shortly after an argument between two men broke out, responding officers found Miller outside the house with his hands raised, admitting he'd shot someone. Upon being asked where the weapon was, he told them that he'd already disassembled it. When officers went inside the home, Miller's uncle, Denzel Williams, was lying on the couch with multiple gunshot wounds to his face and body. Williams was pronounced dead at the scene. Thirteen bullet casings were scattered around the victim's body while parts of the gun were found around the house. Family members told investigators that Miller, who was living at the home with his mother, had become upset when Williams moved in a few months prior. Earlier that day, Miller allegedly sent a text to his mother telling her that he wanted to sleep on the couch and would fight his uncle for the spot. 
Records indicated that in June of 2023, Miller was found guilty of second-degree murder and disorderly conduct. Ultimately, he was sentenced to nearly 20 years behind bars. Number 2. Devin Waiters Shortly before 10 p.m. on September the 12th of 2023, a fight among customers at the Onico Rose Bar in Bradenton, Florida, ended with a shooting. The fight began when an unnamed patron punched another customer, later identified as 20-year-old Devin Waiters, in the face. They were separated by other patrons, at which point Waiters pulled out a black semi-automatic handgun and opened fire multiple times. He injured not only his intended victim but also another customer. Waiters quickly fled, even leaving behind one of his shoes at the sea. The two victims were transported to an area hospital with non-life-threatening gunshot wounds. Shortly after midnight, Waiter's mother called 911 and said that her son had been involved in the shooting at the bar. Deputies arrested Waiter's and noted that he had fresh injuries, including a laceration above his left eye. He was charged with attempted murder and held at the Manatee County Jail without bond. Number 1. Wayne Kenny A good Samaritan who'd come to the aid of an English woman who'd been crushed by a wardrobe in a Liverpool hotel was suspected by police as the murderer. 21-year-old Chloe Haynes was found lifeless in her room at the Adelphi Hotel by her friend in the early hours of September the 10th of 2022. Her friend rushed out to scream for help, according to Wayne Kenny, who was also a hotel guest at the time. He was about to leave his room for a day out with his family when he heard the commotion outside his door. After hearing someone say, she's not breathing, Kenny's instincts kicked in and he hurried out to assist and give Haynes CPR, upon which he realized that the woman could have been dead for hours. When emergency services arrived, Kenny returned to his room. Several minutes later, Merseyside police knocked on his door. They asked him if he was the same person who tried to help Haynes. When Kenny said yes, he was placed under arrest. He then asked why, and one of the officers replied, for murder. Kenny claimed that during his interrogation, a custody attendant told him he could get life behind bars. He was eventually released without charge after investigators ruled the death accidental, noting that there were no suspicious circumstances. They believed that Haynes had gone out drinking and returned to the hotel intoxicated. Haynes had allegedly opened the door of the wardrobe, possibly mistaking it for the toilet door or the exit, at which point the heavy piece of furniture collapsed onto her unjustly. Kenny, acting on impulse and trying to save a life, got him into a terrible predicament that lasted a grueling 10 hours. Thanks for watching. Would you rather go back to your middle school body with the mind you have now or live to be 150 years old without any changes to your current body and mind? Let us know in the comments section below.